Hi and welcome back. Okay, so the next thing I need to do on this fellow, even though I said, you know, oh yeah, we're definitely finished recording and all that, Jeff. Not quite finished recording yet. Need to build last thing, which is going to go on here. So I'm not going to auto grid myself a cylinder. Let's bring it out about that high. Make it one segment, 22 sides. Convert to edible poly. Now then, this new piece here, I'm going to add into its own new layer, <coughs> which I'm going to rename Banner. What is arm join? Right, that piece. So this part needs to be renamed as well. There we go. Okay, so we're going to be working entirely with the banner, so I'm going to hide everything else. And then I'm going to unhide the banner for the moment and the upper torso. Reason being, I can then scale this properly as long as I can see what I'm working on. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And then go straight into bevel mode. Let's bring this in like so. Building the basic kind of base for the banner. Got to decide how high your banner is going to be. Mine's going to be about this big. I want to put a few kind of minor detail areas inside it. Just to make it look more interesting. I'll make it more of a nightmare to texture later on if anyone wants to take up that baton. Okay, and up again. Okay, and what I'm going to do over here is flip this. So I'm going to grab here and just turn it. 90 degrees. Click OK. Let's bring this up like so. Now then, I think this is just a single sided object at the moment, so I'm going to cap it. And then if I cap it, I can select both sides and extrude both of them out simultaneously. <laughs> Evidently not. Hang on then. There, that's that fixed. Should be able to do it now. It's one of those occasions I'm going to be made to look stupid because obviously it's not working, never mind. Shall kill 3ds Max later on. Meantime, let's just get on with extruding this. Okay, I'm going to bring it off this way. Just to have a height that I'm comfortable with. And I'm going to do a little bit of effect work on it first, though. Actually extrude this and select the height, control C. Do it again on this side, exactly the same height. Makes things a tiny bit easier for me. Okay, now with both ends selected, I can now do some extruding and some beveling. I'm going to make it look interesting, you see. Even though it's only a lowly banner, 
It's going to have an interesting thing on it. So. There we go. That makes the T shape for the top, which our banner's eventually going to be resting on. Now over here, I'm going to grab this part here and chamfer it just a little bit wide. That should do it. Delete these polygons here. Go from here to here and do a quick bridge. Then cap the two remaining holes. And then I can drag this down. And I'll scale it up just a tiny bit. That way it sits on that nicely like so. Okay. Just looking at the shape here because I want to make sure that we can make this hang nicely. And so we really need to kind of bend this forward a little bit in places. So I'll go through this and do some connects. And I'm going to go through this one and do some connects. Okay, that should do it. Right, next, I'm going to grab that here. <coughs> Pardon me, I'll just grow that down a little bit. Just about that far. An FFD. A 3x3 three three should be enough. Okay, and now using this, I'm just going to angle it a little bit. Not masses, maybe about 10, 15 degrees tops. Put 10 degrees on that, then 20 on that. And that means I can bend this forward a bit. like this yeah let's see how that looks nice okay convert to head poly and that gives us our hanging banner we can now make our things that are going to hang off this. Before we do though, we really need to build some loops to go onto it. So, left view port again. And I'm going to make a circle. Eventually. There we go. That's about as big as I need. Now then, in rendering, I want to enable in renderer and viewport. I'm going to change that thickness a bit. Just put it about there for the moment. As you can see, it's not quite in the right place yet. Okay, I'm going to make a couple here. And then I'm going to drag these two over to here. They're going to be useful, obviously, to hang the other things off. Now we can attach them and they stop being splines. OK, that's fine. Next we need to make our fun tattered banner. So for this, I need to work out exactly how large it's going to be. It's going to be about this size here. 
So what I'm going to do is create a line. I'm not going to auto grid it. I'm going to start it round about here. Yeah, I'm finding that kind of irritating that it does that as well. Right. Don't worry, I've still got uh, enabling renderer and enabling viewport turned on. I want a good shape on it, something like this. It doesn't have to be really exact in the shape we're doing, because the cloth's going to deform like an absolute pig. I mean, you won't believe how much this stuff's going to deform like crazy once we set up a cloth um, simulation on it. I'll try and make a slightly more balanced shape, however. There we go. Yes, I'll close that spline. Right, first of all, let's en turn off Enable in Viewport and in Renderer. And let's make this into an editable spline. Now I can just open this up and by spline, just go to this one. I'll actually select by vertex, sorry. Right click and let's do a corner instead. Okay, that's fine. Now, we're going to make sure this is in the right place, first of all, which, bizarrely enough, it actually is, more or less. Move it to about there. Okay, back into the front viewport. What I'm going to do then is rename it Banner Cloth. I'm going to rename this item here Banner. Helps that we know what everything is. Right, now over here, I'm going to apply a modifier called Garment Maker to it. Now, the thing about Garment Maker is basically it's going to turn this into a big cloth, hence all these lovely little edges everywhere. Okay. Um, before we do that, though, I should really nip back to our vertex here. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to click Break. And by doing that, the Garment Maker is actually going to preserve corners and it won't become quite so much of a complete mess when it's done. I mean this thing's going to stretch and hang and do all sorts of improbable things but we want it to maintain some of its shape. Okay from Garment Maker we're then going to go down to Cloth Okay now Cloth is useful um, particularly once we have an animation set up. Now at the moment, if you look, there's a very basic animation set up on this, okay? Just a simple turn. So, if I drop into my perspective, what I'm going to do is just link this onto this. There we go. Now, what I need to do is select I'll do this in the front viewport. My actual banner cloth. And inside the banner cloth, I'm going to select by group. And I'm going to select basically these little verts that make up the edges here. Come back here, you. Group. I'll have to make a group first. So we'll call this um, banner group. So I don't think I had the right tool on there. Let's do it now. There we are. Now I can make the group. I had select and link turned on. Right, so now I'm going to click Make Group. And I'm going to give this name Banner Group. And click OK. Now, I'm going to click Sim Node. And um, my Sim Node...
Well, I can't select any SIM nodes actually yet. I'm going to have to go back to my cloth panel and go into object properties. Now, first of all, banner cloth, I want to be a cloth. Then I'm going to add an object to. And for that, I'm going to add my banner itself. Now, banner is a collision object. Okay, so now we can include this in the simulation. For cloth properties, for the moment, I'm going to use this as. Yeah, let's see. What do they tend to make banners out of? I think I'll use starchy cotton for the moment. And just click OK. OK, and let's go back into our groups. And here's our current group. Sim node. And now I can select the banner. OK, and this means now that I can close my group like so, and I can actually build my simulation. So let's go into the perspective and turn off edged faces. And if I just click simulate, this will simulate the next 300 frames for us. So here we go. OK, and there you can see the very simple back and forth going on there. However, it is working. And it's locked onto these pegs at the top here. OK, so let's click play. There, now you can see it better. It's a bit bouncy, but the bounce will stop after a short time. It does take some time to kind of drop into the correct shape. And this is hard-coded into it, obviously. As you can see. Now, what I'm going to do here is just erase the simulation for the time being. And this will be more useful for us when we actually come to actually sticking the texture on this. Okay, but for the moment this banner's done, so we can assign the texture to this soon.